We are following breaking news. Magnitude 4.5 earthquake. If you're just waking up, you probably didn't feel it, but if you've been awake with us this morning, we can tell you that it did strike at 2.39. Yeah, the epicenter was in Berkeley, and it could be felt as far south as San Jose, and then also felt in Richmond as well. Take a look at the seismograph right here. As you can see, that jolt that shook a lot of people throughout the Bay Area. We also want you to check out this video. This is from Safeway, and this was in uh, uh, San Leandro. And you can actually see the effect of that jolt this morning. Those items on the floor right there shaken off of the shelves. Again, we also uh, checked with three Safeways near the epicenter of that earthquake in Berkeley, and they all say that they have no damage to report. Also, we have no reports of injuries or serious damage. Oh, we do want to check in with meteorologist Carrie Hall for some perspective on this. We know that so many people were talking about this earthquake that folks who tried to get on that USGS website got a 503 error, meaning they just couldn't log on. Right, and sometimes that does happen, but we do have it here on the weather map showing where that epicenter occurred, and it was at 239 this morning just east of Berkeley. And we also had another one that rumbled some South Bay folks at about 334 this morning, this one occurring near Cooper T. And overall, we've had uh, over 9 million people feeling the effects of these earthquakes this morning around the Bay Area being awakened very early and feeling a little bit uneasy to start out the day. So we will talk more about this and also about the weather coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Carrie. Well, BART workers are going to check the tracks after the earthquake, and that means we will feel some delays. BART already saying that there will be delays for at least the first few trains. Here is the uh, comment here. No initial reports of damage on our system. In an abundance of caution, we are running the very first trains at reduced speed for another visual inspection by the operator. Riders on those first trains will experience a 20-minute delay. Normal speeds will resume following that. Right now we want to go to today in the Bay's Bob Riddell. He joins us live from the Rock Ridge BART station in Oakland. And Bob, what are you hearing from people out there? Well, it's still early. We've only seen a couple of commuters out here. Good morning to you, Marcus and Chris. But we did speak with BART uh, this morning. They said that service actually did start on time at 4 a.m. But what they did is they did inspections beforehand after that quake around 2.40. They did not find any damage. And as you were mentioning, Chris, it was those first few trains that were going to be going slow so that the engineers, the train engineers, could be looking out for any possible damage. Again, no reports of any damage on the rails, and BART was warning of the possibility of 20-minute delays. As a result, we did see someone on Twitter saying that their delay was only seven minutes. Now, right now, you should be looking at some SFO air train. This is the, the interior train at SFO, the airport. Uh, that was shut down briefly this morning so that the engineers there could make sure that the tracks and that the trains uh, were okay, and then uh, we presume that service on the air train again, which is just within the SFO airport. We, we do believe that that resumed no reports of any problems there. Reporting live here in Rockridge in Oakland, Bob Riddell today in the Bay. All right, thank you, Bob. Well, the quake was centered at the Claremont Hotel in Berkeley, and that's where today in the Bay's Pete Serratos is live there. Uh, not seeing a lot of damage there at this point, Pete. Yeah, that's right, Chris. Not much damage at all here. Uh, we're right across the street from the Claremont Hotel in Berkeley. In fact, we've been showing you guys this storefront here where they would have items that would typically get knocked over if it was a stronger earthquake. You see these books are still in place. Uh, you got the glass that we've been showing you all morning long. That obviously is still in place. Wasn't knocked down as a result of the earthquake. Uh, but let's show you that video. Uh, this was tweeted out. This was at uh, a San Leandro Safeway. I know because uh, I live not too far from there. There's two different Safeways there, but that's one of them where you see some of the items that were knocked down as a result. But as you mentioned, uh, these reports, people feeling this earthquake uh, around the East Bay because the epicenter uh, was where we're standing in this area in Berkeley. In fact, uh, we talked in the past hour with a sergeant with Berkeley police who said he felt that uh, the shake from the earthquake as he was in his patrol car. But we also got an update from him as far as if there are any damages around other parts of the city. We did not have any reports of injury or damage. It did generate some calls, but the calls were not forwarded from our dispatch center to the officers on the street. I believe there were more calls of concern. 
Take you back out here live to the storefront on Domingo Avenue, right across the street from the Claremont Hotel. As you can see, those are some fragile items there with the glasses. Uh, they did not fall as a result of that earthquake. I know I live in the Oakland Hills. Uh, I felt that shake as I was getting ready for work, but no significant damage in that area as well. Now, on this street in Claremont, a pretty busy area in the morning. In fact, there's a coffee shop down the way. We're going to try to talk to some people as we're coming in this morning to see uh, what they felt in the area. But the good news is at least where we're standing in this Claremont area, Area around this block doesn't appear to be any significant damage. We're live in Berkeley. Pete Serratos for Today in the Bay. All right, Pete, thank you for that. And again, as we've been saying, a lot of people have been feeling this earthquake from this morning, 4.5. Uh, they're responding on Twitter this morning. It could actually be felt at Lake Merritt. One person actually could feel it in Santa Cruz. Wow, that is really far. I know we felt it here in San Jose this morning, Marcus. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that you looked for any sort of movement in the pool, in the pool. where you live. I, I just thought the dog jumped on the bed <laughs> yeah. and then I realized he was already there. So that's when I knew it was an earthquake. Carrie, you were up and at it already this morning. Um, you said that you didn't feel it. I was up at, at that time uh, doing my hair and I did not feel uh, that earthquake and we do pay really close attention to any earthquakes on the Hayward fault because the last major earthquake we had was in 1868 and that was a 7.0 that did kill 30 people and uh, this was known as the great San Francisco earthquake until the one happened in 1906. So if you are up this morning, it's a good time and a good reminder to make sure you do have a plan as you start to feel some shaking. You want to make sure you drop cover and hold as you are under some sturdy furniture like a table or a desk. After the uh, earthquake, you make sure that you and your family have a meeting place. And this is, of course, something you arrange ahead of time. And we pay attention to these small earthquakes because they could be a foreshock to a larger event. So we continue to monitor that and also see what else is going on around the Bay Area and get those reports from you. And if you are in the indoors areas and you feel that shaking, you want to make sure you stay away from windows. Stay away from those outside doors and walls and also do not use a doorway unless it is strongly supported. But we always do say get under some sturdy furniture, uh, a table or a desk and do not try to get outside, even though you may be frightened while that shaking is occurring. So those are some good tips. Of course, now is the time to make sure you have your earthquake quick kit and also your family is prepared in the event that we do have a major earthquake. But thankfully, no injuries or major damage damage report and of course we'll have more updates right here. All right, thank you very much, Carrie. Good reminder about that doorway. A lot of folks remember from the olden days that we were told to stand in a doorway. Things are just a little bit different right now. We want to check in with uh, Vienna Arana also because she is watching for delays. Bart said that they would have delays for sure. Now we're learning VTA too. Yeah, indeed. In fact, they, they sent us a, a bit of a communication saying they're only expecting minor delays also on those first initial, you know, morning commuters can expect to feel those minor delays and they're actually doing it for an earthquake earthquake what they called a routine inspection following that earthquake so they're doing the same they're playing it on the safe side and also Bard still expect to see those major delays on those first two trains they are running them rather slow because they're still checking for that visual inspection as far as Muni and Caltrain we're still checking for delays haven't heard anything back as far as any impacts on that but as far as the roads earthquake impacts none and also no major accidents to report at this hour back to you all right thank you very much BNA. Coming up, our breaking coverage of the earthquake continues. A 4.5 quake hits the Bay Area. We felt it all around, and we're also bringing you the rest of the day's headlines. Including a new addition for a California favorite, In-N-Out Burgers. First new menu item wow. in over a decade. Yeah, on the <laughs> secret item. All right. Well, a computer flaw right in the chips as well. I'll tell you what you need to do when Today in the Bay continues. Right now at 512, light rain continues after a roundup. Some heavy rain moving into the Bay Area. We will still have this rain and the potential of some heavier downpours as we go into tonight and early tomorrow. I'll have the timeline of this and what you can expect where you live coming up in five minutes. And I continue to track any delays on mass transit following that earthquake near Berkeley. Now, BART is still expecting some major delays due to earthquake track inspections. VT also recently sent out a communication saying Minor, commuters can expect minor delays also due to earthquake inspections. I'll have another update for you coming up in just a bit. 
Thanks, Ben and Kerry. Well, developing right now, a battle inside the Republican Party. President Trump versus his former chief advisor, Steve Bannon. Uh, this is one to watch. A tell-all book has the president fuming and, of course, reacting. Today in the base, Tracy Potts has new details overnight on how Trump is fighting back. The book by Michael Wolff is called Fire and Fury, and that's exactly how President Trump feels about it. Furious, disgusted, would probably certainly fit. Excerpts released early quote former chief strategist Steve Bannon going after the president and his family, saying the Russia investigation will quote, crack Don Jr. like an egg, calling Trump Jr.'s meeting with Russians treasonous going after the president's son in an absolutely outrageous and unprecedented way. Bannon was fired, but still in the president's good graces three months ago. Steve's been a friend of mine for a long time. I like Steve a lot. Now in a statement, the president says Bannon, quote, lost his mind when he left. Overnight, a letter from Mr. Trump's lawyer claiming Bannon violated his non-disclosure agreement. They want him to cease and desist. Lawmakers aren't saying much at all. Oh. Um, I, you know, that's between Mr. Bannon and uh, the president. I have a long-standing policy of, of staying out of the battle of personalities in Washington. Some analysts think special counsel Robert Mueller may want to hear more. What is Bannon going to say? Well, I was just making it up. I mean, presumably he had some reason to say those things. Explosive details from a former insider now up for debate as fact or fiction. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Well, happening today, a longtime leader in San Francisco politics is expected to throw her hat into the ring in the race for mayor. Former Board of Supervisors President Angela Aleto, Alioto, Alioto plans to file nomination papers later this morning at the Department of Elections. Now, she's the latest big name seeking to finish out Ed Lee's term. Lee died suddenly last month. Acting Mayor London Breed has uh, talked about running. She has not filed papers among those considered locks to run. Former state lawmaker and supervisor Mark Lino and District 6 Supervisor Jan Kim. Also, the examiner reports City Attorney Dennis Herrera, Herrera has pulled papers to consider a run. Next Tuesday is the deadline to file. Also today, London Breed says that she'll announce, quote, significant progress in the city's effort to end all traffic fatalities. We reported before on San Francisco's Vision Zero goal. Now, the goal is to have zero deaths by the year 2024. We checked with the city's data overnight. 2017 saw only 17 deaths. That's down from 30 in 2016 and down from 31 in 2015. It is 515 right now and new this morning. One of the South Bay's best known hotels is reportedly under new ownership. The Mercury News reports that San Jose's Fairmont Hotel was sold for close to $225 million. The purchase closed this week. The buyer is an East Bay Holdings Group, and the group selling the hotel includes former Oakland A's partner, Lou Wolf. Well, there is a new high-tech security problem to worry about this morning. Scott McGrew, this one is in the chips. Yeah, right in the guts of your computer, Chris. It's a newly discovered flaw in the main chip that runs computers and phones. There are actually two flaws, one that affects Intel chips that's been nicknamed Meltdown, and another that affects all kinds of chips called Spectre. Someone's having a good time naming those flaws. Microsoft and Apple promise a fix, so sit tight. There's nothing you can do but update when the update comes. Shares in Intel fell 3% on that news, down about a dollar and a half. Otherwise, stocks continue to go up and up. All three major indices, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, record highs this morning. NASDAQ above 7,000. Shares in Tesla suffering, though. That company said what we said it would say. It's not making enough of the Model 3s, and they're not doing it fast enough. Keep in mind, more than 400,000 people have plunked down a $1,000 deposit to get a Model 3. The company says it made just 1,500 cars in the last three months. That's a fraction of the number they promised over and over. The Wall Street Journal says this morning the Tesla news continues a long history of company forecasts poor enough to be construed as misleading. Now, a bit of a bright spot. A couple of guys managed to drive a Tesla 3 across country from L.A. to New York over the New Year's holiday. Huh. This is sped up video from the <laughs> YouTube channel. I would hope so. Yeah, it's a really <laughs> fast car. <laughs> <laughs>
50 hours, 16 minutes, 32 seconds, and they said it took uh, about $100 worth of electricity to go coast to coast. Yeah, really? but the real question is, where did they find those chargers? Right. You know, in, Tesla has been putting uh, rapid chargers along the way, so that's part of it as well, uh, is there you're able to do that. It does take a while. It's not as fast as a gas yeah. fill-up, so... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't drive cross country, period. But if I were, I'd, I'd use it. <laughs> I just thought they'd have to go like Farmer John. Right. <laughs> Can we borrow your outlet? For it's actually like the beginning of a joke. <laughs> Two electric car drivers walk up to a farmhouse <laughs> and knock on the door. Right. right. Well, I, that, that's good to see, though, because range has always been part of the yes, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, new this morning. Thank you, Scott. A story that is creating big buzz among Bay Area burger aficionados, aficionados, especially ones who love in and out For the first time in 15 years, the chain is adding a new item to its menu. Do you know what it is? No. Hold the ketchup. It? it has nothing to do with burgers. It's hot cocoa. What? Yeah. If you know in and out you probably know the company sticks to what it does best. That means burgers, fries, shakes, that's it. Hot cocoa, though, now available at in and outs everywhere. So far, we haven't heard anything about animal-style hot cocoa. <laughs> but I did see Jody Hernandez tweeted yesterday that she had her first, uh, you know, test. And it took me a minute to register, like, oh, wait, that's different. That is. Yeah. And that's not part of the secret menu, which I'm finding out about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have to school you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So as you head up early this morning, getting ready to head out, and maybe you'll be stopping by the in and out later today, you may have some rain falling, especially if you're in the North Bay or in San Francisco. Now we're also continuing to monitor that earthquake. Uh, which has been revised to a 4.4 magnitude earthquake and that happened at 239 this morning woke a lot of people up really early with some rolling and we also have some rain and some gusty winds that continue from that storm system that moved through yesterday. Now some of the heaviest rain has shifted over toward the Sierra and this is a fairly warm storm so it's not producing a lot of snow and we do still have some light rain moving into parts of the Bay Area this morning. Once again, mostly over San Francisco over toward San Rafael fell that will continue to move farther off towards the north and east as we go through the next couple of hours. So looking at some of these rainfall totals, Bodega Bay had about three tenths of an inch of rain. We're going to go from north to south. Healdsburg had about a tenth of an inch of rain and American Canyon had uh, about a two tenths of an inch of rain, about the same in Napa. Oakland measured quite a bit, three quarters of an inch there. That's really good. San Jose, almost a half of an inch of rain. San Francisco, about a tenth of an inch of rain and Moraga had almost almost an inch of rain there. So we are seeing some rainfall totals all over the place there. And we do appreciate when you send in your rainfall totals on Twitter uh, from your rain gauge at home at home. So we are going to see some of these light showers continuing to move through as we go through the day. But most of the most of the Bay Area will stay mostly dry as we look at the South Bay. Don't expect a lot of rain there. Even some sunshine today while the rain will be off and on from Santa Rosa to Point Reyes as we go into late tonight and early tomorrow morning. There will be some more rain moving in, the potential of some heavier downpours, and then that will start to move off towards the south and east as a cold front sweeps through, finally clearing things out from the rain as we head into tomorrow night. So expect some off and on showers between now and then, and rainfall totals don't look that heavy for the South Bay, but much higher for the North Bay, where there could be up to a half of an inch of rain. We'll take a look at the rest of the forecast coming up in a few minutes in VNA's tracking those BART delays and VTA delays. Yeah, riders, pay attention. Attention this morning, especially if a BART or the VTA or your early morning commute, because you can still expect to see some delays along BART and also VTA due to some routine earthquake inspections. Both of these are saying they didn't see any initial damage. They haven't reported any damage. They're just doing it as a, on the side of safety. As far as Muni and Caltrain, we have not seen any delays being reported at this hour, which is always great news. But as always, please make sure to check on our website or also on their website before you head out the door, just in case there are any changes to your route. Now, as far as an overall look at the Bay Area on the roads, we haven't seen any major accidents or in fact any minor accidents to report. Just a couple of fender benders right now along 680. It looks like one just popped up there, so I'll go ahead and check out that. But aside from that, not much going on out on the roads. Back to you. All right, that's good to hear. Thank you very much, VNA. Well, coming up, the green rush here in California is causing a big problem for law enforcement. We'll show you how police are dealing with legal marijuana.
525 right now. We're back as we are following that earthquake up to 4.5 this morning centered in Berkeley seismograph. Look right here. As you can see that jolt that shook a lot of people felt as far south as uh, we said Santa Cruz. We even heard yeah. uh, some people there talking about it. So certainly something we are keeping track here since we've been on the air since four o'clock this morning, early yeah. this morning. We started up a little bit early. I mean, we were awake anyway, right? <laughs> to, yeah. to continuing coverage now of our state's so-called green rush, the uh, recreational marijuana sale has been legal for less than a week now, but as the Today Show's Gotti Schwartz reports, police are sometimes struggling to keep up with these new laws. Yeah, good morning. Right now we're with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. They just hit that dispensary over there, an illegal dispensary, they say. There are also other dispensaries in this area. They've hit one across the street over here, one over there. They have people now in custody. They're sorting out who works at this dispensary, who doesn't. It's just part of the difficulties that they are now facing as the state of California has legalized marijuana. They are saying this does not mean that there are no rules when it comes to marijuana. There are rules as to who can distribute marijuana, who can possess marijuana, how much marijuana they can possess. We're going to be going around with these deputies as they look for people that are driving under the influence and busting dispensaries like this. And we'll have much more coming up on the Today Show. All right, we'll be watching for that. Also new this morning, the Powerball jackpot is now America's eighth largest prize ever. No winning tickets were sold for last night's in last night's drawing. The jackpot now jumps to an estimated $550 million ahead of Saturday's drawing. It still could go up, though, as the interest goes up. The Mega Millions Games uh, grand prize will be $418 million on Friday, so you could be a half billionaire. Yeah, I like when no one wins, because that means, okay, now I can play it. <laughs> All right, well, coming up, we continue to follow that breaking news, the quake that shakes the Bay Area. Lots of people feeling it. Our coverage continues right after the break. The time now, 527. 529 now, and just about... Three hours ago, you might have been jolted awake. We are following breaking news. A magnitude 4.5, up to a 4.5, the USGS says, struck around 239. The epicenter was in Berkeley, as you can see right there on your map. It could be felt far away. You felt it in San Jose. People felt it in Richmond. Now take a look at the seismograph right here, and you can see that jolt that shook a lot of people throughout the Bay Area. We have producers in Oakland, San Francisco, people in San Jose, all saying that they felt that jolt early this morning. Yeah, even we saw a tweet from uh, San, uh, San Santa Cruz this morning. Uh, this is video from San Leandro, so folks there felt it as well. This uh, tweeter put this up. Uh, you can see that some of the lighter items fell off the store shelves as they went a little rocking this morning. No reports of major injury or damage, though. Our digital managing editor said that at her home in San Francisco, she did see that some of that old plaster in her building kind of uh, cracked and did show some wear. Absolutely. This and we, you know, that was a Safeway there in San Leandro. And we actually called three other Safeways in the Berkeley area near the epicenter yeah, of where that closer. happened. They said no reported damage at this time. So it looks like it was just kind of scattered on where it actually shook yeah. things off shelves or, or off of walls this morning. If you saw anything, though, do uh, tag us in your social media posts. We'd love to see you on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're watching for all of that this morning. Carrie Hall is also watching for the fallout from the earthquake, but also watching for the rain. Right, and we had a lot of people on Twitter this morning, and it's uh, funny that that's the first of the resource that people go to, saying that they felt a jolt and then some rolling, and that that was centered near Berkeley, and that happened at 2.39 this morning, a magnitude 4.5. We've got over 9 million people in the Bay Area that were going to the USGS website, also feeling some shaking in the South Bay with the 2.6 that happened about an hour later. So possibly the person in Santa Cruz that felt that shaking may have felt the, the 2.6 that was centered around the Cupertino area, also around Los Gatos. As we look at what's happening here as far as it's coming from the sky. Still some light rain lingering from that storm system that we had yesterday that brought us quite a bit of some rain. So we'll be talking about those rainfall totals. Also, you, also helping you get prepared for not only the rain, but the possibility of future earthquakes coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you very much, Carrie. Well, BART workers are checking the tracks after this morning's earthquake. Right, today in the Bay's Bob Riddell joins us from the Rock Ridge BART station in Oakland. Good morning, Bob. 
Good morning to you, Marcus and Chris. Uh, BART actually was able to get service started at the normal 4 o'clock start time of the, this morning, but they did have people out on the tracks inspecting for damage. They found no damage as a result, but they said you might see some delays this morning, delays of up to 20 minutes, because those first trains out of the station this morning, they had their engineers driving slow so that they could, their train operators driving slow so they could keep an eye on the rails to see if there was any damage that might have been missed during that pre-inspection. Again, there's no reports of any damage. Just something to think about if you are taking to BART this morning that there could be delays. Here are a couple of commuters we caught up at, at the Rockridge BART station who talked about their surprise jolt this morning. Got out of bed, dog scared the whole hell. Um, checked around and really didn't last that long. But it was enough to wake you up. Yeah. Checked the house, everything was in place and uh, laid around for a little while until you calmed down and go back to bed. The whole family woke up, checked to make sure everything was okay, no gas leaks or anything. They went back to sleep. Were you surprised here it was only a 4-4, four, 4-5? Four, four, yes. You thought it was going to be more? I thought it was like maybe at least a 6. And this is video out of SFO taken this morning shortly after that 240 uh, quake that was magnitude 4.4, 4.5. You're looking at one of the air trains. This is the internal people mover within the airport. It was shut down so that the people there could do some, uh, just to make sure that the train wasn't damaged and road damage to the rails. As far as we know, those air trains are back up and running. Again, no reports of any damage. Reporting live here outside the Rockridge BART station in Oakland, Bob Riddell today in the Bay. Yeah, I think if it was a 6.0, Bob, don't you agree that guy would have been bumped out of bed? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Bob. Absolutely. You know, the first thing that I did this morning when I woke up and I felt this uh, this quake was I went to look out at my swimming pool to see if it was sloshing about because during the Napa quake a few years ago, the water was sloshing about mm -hmm. and that was a magnitude five something, if I recall correctly. When I didn't see that water sloshing about, I knew that we were probably most likely in the 4.0 range. Well, we have trained Marcus well in his uh, yes. time here in the Bay Area. First thing he I did, did this morning. <laughs> hey, he was looking out at the pool. Thank you very much, Bob. Well, the quake was centered near the Claremont Hotel in Berkeley, so they were probably checking the pool there. It's a big one, an Olympic sized pool there. Absolutely. Right now we want to go to today in the Bay's uh, Pete Serratos. He is live there this morning, Pete. And I know you've been showing us this morning just behind you a place where there's a lot of um, items that could have fallen off, but everything looks good. Yeah, that's right, Marcus. We're here uh, right across the street from the Claremont Hotel. I'm looking at it right there uh, near this storefront. We showed you that uh, the store with uh, glasses there, uh, with books there. Nothing fell over as a result of the earthquake, of course, because we're talking about a 4.4 earthquake. At least I think that's the latest numbers that we have. But right now we're standing in front of this uh, Pete's Coffee where we talked to some people, and we'll get to that in a moment. But first, I want to show you guys uh, that video from San Leandro. This is at one of the Safeways in San Leandro uh, following that earthquake. Someone tweeted out this video. Uh, you see uh, it looks like maybe mouthwash uh, different things in the uh, aisle. I think even a bottle of lotion may have uh, tipped over there uh, as a result of the earthquake. Uh, but I did get a chance to speak to someone uh, inside of this Pete's Coffee not too long ago. It was a worker who was heading inside. Now she lives in the Oakland area in that Temescal area. She says she felt that earthquake. Had a chance to talk to her. Uh, here's what she had to say. I was awake because I wasn't sleeping very well anyway, but um, I heard it from my parents' room, maybe the other end of the house, and then saw my door shake and my mirror shake, and then it passed right through. So like many of us that worked this morning shift, she was just getting up for work, and that's when she felt uh, this earthquake. But at least here in Claremont at the epicenter of where the earthquake started, we're not seeing any significant damage or damage at all. Of course, we're going to talk to more people who are heading into this coffee shop uh, to get an idea of what they felt this morning. We'll have more of that in the next hour. We're live in Berkeley. Pete Serratos for Today in the Bay. All right. Thank you very much, Pete. Well, right now, people have been responding to the earthquake through Facebook and Twitter, and we've gotten thousands of comments. Uh, we want to take a look at some of them right now, and you can see uh, Michelle right there. She said, yep, jump right on Facebook to make sure that the, a quake went through there. Make sure a quake 
and not a dream. Yeah, I felt the same way this morning because I could feel it. And yeah. I'm like, okay, was that an earthquake or, or did I just hear something or yeah. feel something? Jennifer Thurston says that her heart is still pounding out of her chest. She had to peel her cat off the ceiling. <laughs> my guy just looked at me and my dog. You know, I thought maybe, you know, uh, he had jumped on the bed, but he was already there. And this one right here, you can say that was the hardest one I felt since 1989. 1980, wow. That's well, we have had other ones, but the thing is that sometimes you don't feel them. I mean, the Napa earthquake was mm -hmm. stronger than this one. Right. But I live in the South Bay, and I did not feel that one until I got the phone call from the bosses saying, you got to get in. Yeah, I know I, I know. I have a friend who used to live there at that time was telling me about how the TVs were swaying. And that's one thing I look for, the TV, like, was it swaying? This morning it wasn't, but then it went out to the pool, and I saw just a little activity yeah, out there. Yeah, it's time to get those straps. You got to get those straps and secure those big now items. I see. <laughs> well, we always say, like, did you feel it? The next question is, are you ready for the next one? And right. Harry Hall. You've been talking about that. Right, morning. yeah, now is the time to make sure you are prepared. Even though that was a small quake, it is a good reminder that you do want to make sure you are prepared for anything that may happen. And we pay attention to uh, any, uh, even the small quakes that happen on the Hayward Fault because the last major earthquake we had on the Hayward Fault was October 21st. 1868. That was a long time ago, and we are overdue for a major earthquake, and the potential of this just being a foreshock does exist, and we are going to make sure that you are prepared in case there is something uh, a little bit uh, more strong uh, could happen later on today, and you want to make sure you do have a plan, so make sure you drop cover or hold, and also make sure you're getting under some sturdy furniture, a desk, a desk or a table. After the quake, make sure your family has a meeting Eating place and of course that's something that you do arrange ahead of time and if you are indoors make sure that you are under that furniture as we talked about stay away from the windows outside doors and walls and do not use a doorway unless it is strongly supported and also uh, we do have that high danger of people trying to run outside during the middle of the quake even though you are frightened make sure you get under that furniture and do not try to get outside while it's shaking that is actually when a lot of those injuries do occur and as we go throughout the day, more people getting up out and about. If you're outside, make sure you stay outside, move away from any buildings. And also, once you are out in the open, stay there until that shaking stops. And most injuries, once again, as we talked about, are caused by falling debris or people trying to run outside during the middle of the quake. So just a heads up there. Also a good time to make sure you have your earthquake kit and you are prepared for anything that happens in the future. And we will talk about our weather and what's ahead as that rain moves out of the Bay Area for now. And a look at that is just coming up in a few minutes. VNA, what's happening out there on the roads? Well, I do have an update on those bar delays. Bart recently just tweeted that they no longer uh, are expecting any delays. The inspections have been completed at this time. Everything seems to be back to normal on BART. As far as Muni, never saw any delays to begin with. VTA still expecting some minor delays due to that routine earthquake inspection and Caltrain, no delays to report at this hour. As far as the rest of the Bay Area, we are keeping a close eye on the roads as well. I do have a crash to report right at the summit. It looks like uh, two cars may be blocking some lanes northbound 17, and we are seeing a little bit of slowing in that area. Area. We could see more buildup within the next couple of minutes as that traffic starts to really roll in during the 6 a.m. hour. I'll send things back to you. Thank you very much, BNA. Well, coming up, our coverage of the earthquake up to a 4.5 continues this morning. Meanwhile, a whole lot of shaking going on in Washington as well. A lot of infighting within the Trump administration. We'll take a look when today in the Bay continues. It is 543 on this Thursday morning, waking up to some wet roads after a round of some heavy rain that happened yesterday evening. Still some light showers moving through San Francisco into parts of Marin County. And as we go to the South Bay, a live look outside and a, a temperature trend for Campbell starting out in the mid 50s, rising today into the mid 60s. Rain holds off for a little while longer, but there is more on the way. The look at the timeline coming up in about five minutes. And an update on the bar delays. Bar now tweeting out all track inspections have been completed. No delays to report. It looks like service is back to normal. VTA is still expecting minor delays. I'll have an update on that coming up in just a bit. All right, thank you, VNA. In other news this morning, bar police are still trying to find answers after a shooting incident last night led to a second shooting, that one involving bar police. 
and in that one, one man died. It all happened outside a barbershop across the street from the West Oakland BART station. Witnesses say one man shot another man in the leg and then arriving officers broke up the shooting but shot the man who fired initially. The, man, the person, one person says that she understands why police had to use deadly force, uh, but she wishes it hadn't been deadly. Take a personal life is not necessarily, I feel like they under train and they should be able to uh, get trained a little bit better so that they can do what they need to do in order not to take a personal life. Investigators are still not confirming that an officer is actually the one who fired the fatal shot. Oakland police plan to interview the BART police officer as well. And an update for you right now. The search continues for the man accused of sexually assaulting and robbing a teacher inside her own classroom. Now we were telling you about this story yesterday and the situation that happened at Harker Middle School. This is in San Jose. Now, police are still asking for the public's help in identifying the man. You can take a look at your screen right there. This is surveillance video. And if you would like to look at this again and again, just to see if you know who that is, you can go to our website, NBCBayArea.com. I'll new this morning, the New Year's resolution a lot of folks have is to give up smoking. In this case, it is a resolution made by one of the world's leading producers of tobacco. Philip Morris International is launching a new campaign, not announcing a plan to smoke, but a plan to, quote, give up cigarettes. The producer of brands including Marlboro and Chesterfield says it is its ambition to build a smoke-free future and to replace traditional cigarettes with alternatives like e-cigarettes. The manifesto does not indicate any kind of timetable. Overnight, we did look a little closer at the declining numbers of smokers in California, and the most recent report from the Department of Public Health indicates that cigarette use among adults has declined 51 percent since 1988, and that represents a drop of more than 3 million smokers. As of 2014, about 11% of California adults smoke. 546 and new this morning, a first of its kind honor anywhere for a South Bay animal shelter. Now, the Humane Society Silicon Valley in Milpitas is receiving the first ever award for being a model shelter. UC Davis is handing out the award. Being a model shelter means following the strict set uh, strict guidelines set for uh, more than 500 new guidelines devised by the Association of Shelter Veterinarians. Uh, oh. Shelter leaders are thrilled to be receiving this honor. This is all about saving more lives. In addition, it's all about setting a standard of excellence that we hope will inspire other shelters all across the country that they're going to want to step up and follow in our footsteps. And the new guidelines are meant to regulate the welfare and care of shelter animals and were devised because there are no federal guidelines in place. That event takes place at 1030 this morning. Well, new details now on this happy story that we brought to you on New Year's Day. Remember, we told you about one of the first Bay Area babies born, and now the little guy has a name. He is Ryan Powell Dominguez. He was born just two minutes after midnight on January 1st at UCSF Mission Bay. He came in at six pounds, 10 ounces. Mom, Samantha Powell, is a psychiatrist. Dad, Martin Dominguez, is a cardiology fellow at UCSF. I wonder if he was on duty at the time <laughs> that he got the call. They did move to San Francisco go from the Philadelphia area about a year ago, but now they can say he, they have a Bay Area native. Yeah, congratulations, the Ryan. <laughs> well, a fallout between friends is turning into a disaster for the White House. That's Scott McGrew, the president, demanding Steve Bannon keep quiet. That's right. In fact, one of Trump's lawyers, Chris, has sent out a letter threatening legal action against Bannon. Bannon has reportedly said the president's son and the president's son-in-law may have committed treason when they met with Russians at Trump Tower during the campaign. We know this meeting happened. There's the Russian because Donald Trump admitted to it and incredibly even his son released emails about it saying he was eager to hear about the dirt that Russians had on Hillary Clinton. The president fired back on Wednesday with a statement. Steve Bannon has nothing to do with me or my presidency. When he was fired, he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. The official statement much longer. We have the full statement at NBCBayArea.com. Now, that Steve Bannon has nothing to do with the Trump presidency is flat out ridiculous. He was the CEO of the president's campaign, chief strategist, and the president even put him on the National Security Council, even though people urged him not to. That's Bannon right there in the Oval Office. Bannon promised a revolution inside the Republican Party using Trump as the revolution's leader, and that happened. 
And then Bannon promised a revolution inside the revolution with candidates like Roy Moore, and that's come true too. In the middle of all this, Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, who's facing criminal charges for money laundering, has sued the special counsel, counsel Robert Mueller, and the DOJ, saying Mueller went too far in the investigation, and that Manafort's money issues are beyond the scope of the special prosecutor's investigation. While we don't know what's actually going inside that investigation, reports that he has asked for the president's bank records dating back before he was a candidate indicates the investigation into Trump and his colleagues is very wide indeed. Well, we continue to watch this quickly developing new story coming out of Washington. We're covering it on Twitter as well. You can follow me. I'm at Scott McGrew. All right, thanks, Scott. Well, how good is Steph Curry? Add this to his legacy. A gorgeous three-pointer. Now, we've seen many of those before. Yeah. What's three that? seconds before the buzzer right there, breaking the tie last night in Dallas against the Mavericks. Curry led all scores with 32 points, and the Dubs have won their second straight since he returned from ankle surgery. So, look at that. Whoosh. Yeah, so he doesn't even do it towing the three-point line. He actually backs up to make sure, like, there it is. It's way in front like, of I've me. I've seen so many of those gorgeous shots. I mean, he's known for them now. Look at that. <laughs> Look at Marcus, that. you got to go to a game. Marcus hasn't been to a game. Oh, oh no, you got to get to a game. Go. Is that true? Christmas gift? No! Oh, <laughs> hey, big spender. <laughs> right? Oh, I'm, I'm taking him all month. This month. <laughs> that would be nice. For those tickets. <laughs> no kidding. I'll drive by Oracle. Right. That's about all I can afford. Yeah, right. I know. So this morning, a lot of people are driving by Oracle, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of people getting up and out the door, heading to work this morning, and it is a very slick commute. Road's still wet, and we do still have some light rain falling, but you can see there a lot of green over the Sierra. That's the rain that we had yesterday evening that has since moved off towards the east and we're getting another batch of some light rain now moving into the Bay Area. The seven day forecast is up at the bottom of the screen. You want to come on over and check it out as you make your weekend plans. We will still have some light rain moving from San Rafael over toward parts of Sonoma and Napa counties, but overall it's mostly a light shower. We do start out with some mild temperatures generally in the low to mid 50s as you get ready to head out the door with our high temperatures today up to 60. 66 degrees in Concord, 64 in Livermore, 65 in San Jose, and in San Francisco today. Expect a high of 60 degrees. As we get started this morning, getting dressed, and it's a very soggy morning. You do want to make sure you have on a hat, probably good because it's not going to be a good hair day, and also a nice warm coat because it is chilly to start. But later on today, it will be much more comfortable. Light long sleeves and also some boots because there will be some leftover puddles that you'll have to step through after all that rain that we had yesterday yesterday, especially where we did have some of the heavier downpours falling right now. Some light rain as we see a closer look and going to have some light showers possible throughout the day, especially in the North Bay, and we're not expecting much more rain for the South Bay today. As we go into early tomorrow morning, some heavier downpours starting to pick up as a cold front starts to sweep through the Bay Area, and we could still see some rain into tomorrow afternoon and looking at the potential of an additional close to half inch of rain in parts of the North Bay, but the rest of the area south of the Golden Gate Bridge, very light amounts of some additional rain. We do dry out for the weekend. San Francisco reaching into the mid 50s. Inland areas going to see those highs cooling off over the next few days. And VNA gets us out there on the roads and public transportation. Very important public transportation. Following that earthquake, there were some delays on BART. Happy to report no delays. Inspections are complete. VTA still experiencing some minor delays. As far as the roads go, well, an overall look at the Bay Area. We've started off on a good note, but now I do have an update along that crash. Northbound 17 at Summit, it appears now several lanes are blocked and community there in that area can expect heavy delays. I'll have another update coming up in just a bit. Back to you. All right, thank you, VNA. Well, coming up, a Bay Area jail facing a new lawsuit. The reason pregnant inmates say that they are being treated unfairly. But first happening now, we continue to stay on top of that breaking news up to a 4.5 magnitude quake in Berkeley early this morning. Our newsroom is working the phones, asking about damage so far. We haven't heard anything major, but we'd like to hear from you. Reach out to us on our Facebook page, our Twitter feed, Instagram. We are wherever you are. Show us what you experience. Also this morning, Cadbury is making a limited number of white chocolate versions of its popular Easter cream egg, adding a cash prize for the folks who find them. The company say, says that it will make a small batch between 350 and 400 white eggs for sale through Easter Sunday. We're back in two minutes.